All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, the VB Adrenaline Podcast is back after a crazy month or so. We've been away. We've been on the road. We've been covering, um, recruiting, uh, qualifiers, transfer portal, everything else. But now uh, we finally found some time and we figured we better start talking um, recruiting. Uh, so that's probably the biggest questions that I get and we get in our mailbox is questions about recruiting. Um, and so today's episode um, is with uh, the men from Flow State Valley, and that's Justin Wells and Peter Dustin. Guys, thank you. Um, we've talked a lot, but thank you for being brave enough to come on the podcast today. Oh, we appreciate you having us. Thank you for having us, yeah. So first of all, before we jump in, um, and, and everybody, I'm going to tell you, this gonna, probably won't be your old, traditional, um, generic, politically correct conversation about uh, about recruiting. We're going to talk about a lot of questions I have, a lot of questions people have, and maybe some uncomfortable situations with recruiting. But before that, tell me about what you guys do um, at Flow State. Yeah, so... Uh... You know, with uh, of of course in the recruiting world, um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, it's a recruiting, you know, quote unquote services or whatnot are a little bit of a a hot button topic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're, I mean, at least we perceive ourselves certainly to be a little bit different from that. Um, you know, we actually serve as the recruiting coordinators for four clubs. So um, I represent Iowa Select and Evansville United. Uh, and Justin uh, represents Alabama Performance in K2. And so those four clubs, we actually serve as the full-time recruit recruiting coordinators for. Um, and then outside of that, we, we do open up our services to athletes all across the country. Uh, we've worked with athletes from Canada and Puerto Rico uh, as well, Dominican Republic. Um, and so, I mean, our goal is, again, just to try and help every athlete we can with the um, you know, the vision of uh, utilizing a holistic and highly personalized approach to really help families navigate the complexities of, of the recruiting journey um, while offering sort of an unparalleled access to us as your recruiting coordinator and not not presenting sort of a, a once a month or a, or a session sort of relationship or um, class or anything like that. I mean, we are we're one to one. Uh, we're advocates for you. And, um, you know, and even the kids that we that we work with that aren't part of our partnership clubs. Um, you know, our goal is to, to partner with those families. We're, and for the clubs, like we're, we're not here to replace them. In fact, we're always encouraging, you know, our athletes, like they should still be sending all of their uh, recruiting contacts and club contacts and all of their emails. Again, we're, we're educating them through this process and um, we're not the ones that are in the gym with them daily. Uh, we can know everything about them as a, learn everything about them as a person and watch their film and dissect it down to the bone and, um, but, uh, you know, we're there to partner and aid them in this process and, and not to, to replace anybody like that. So, um, yeah. Good. And Justin, we'll bring you in and, and talk about, um, your first year with full state, but you have the experience and some great relationships with college coaches. So a lot of what we're going to talk about on the other end, you guys have both been through that, but Justin just reached recently. So talk a little bit about your coaching career. Yeah, so I think that's a unique perspective that I, that I bring uh, to to Flow State, and and I can be very honest and real about you know just sitting in this chair, um, especially as the recruiting coordinator at university over the last ten years, and be able to say, um, you know, I I was in those meetings, I was making those decisions, I was sending those emails um, just you know a year and a half ago and a year ago, you know, and so um, it you know not too far removed, and so. Um, when it comes to, oh, this is what that means. And, and that's something that's really important to us is transparency and being able to kind of uh, look behind the curtain for our, for our uh, you know, athletes and their families and our clubs to be able to say like, hey, this is, this is what, you know, maybe people aren't telling you right now, or this is maybe what that, you know, a politically incorrect thing to tell you um, that this is what college coaches are doing or not doing and stuff. Because, um, you know, if you're, if you are, um, armed with information, you're going to be more confident in this process. And, and that's really important to us. Um, so I think I, I bring my experience of, of being at even NAI and D3 and, you know, even at the power five and, and mid-major level and, and everything to be able to kind of, um, you know, talk about many different avenues and, and aspects of, you know, I've either coached or coached for or coached against every single level Um it, it out there. You know, my JV team at NAI played only exclusively JUCOs. Um, so, you know, I, I coached against them. I've coached against D2 and D3 and, you know, all that stuff. So it's pretty easy for me to sit here and say, 
well, I know what that's like because I've actually done it very recently. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, that's something that, that I'm proud that I can bring to Flow State and um, something that I can uh, enhance uh, what Peter's already doing. I think when Justin came, oh, sorry, I, I just wanted to add, like, I think when Justin, you know, you know, came to me and, you know, said he was interested in getting, I mean, I had been looking for somebody to kind of join me and had previous um, work experience or, or collaboration with Justin as a college coach, um, which obviously made it a, a very simple decision. And, and of course, you know, his, his, um, you know, in morals and sort of his approach to this process with families needed to match what, what I believe in is. And, you know, I think, I think, uh, we had a, so there's, there's, to be honest, we've spent years, a decade plus, all both of us developing relationships with college coaches. And I mean, we are word of mouth. We don't market. We just have, we just got a website for the first time. Um, and a coach that once upon a time, you know, saw recruiting service and thought about, you know, when we contacted them was, you know, very hesitant. Um, and now who we have an extremely close relationship with said the other day, you know, you guys are the nitty gritty. Um, you're not the blueprint, which, you know, I think, you know, there's no gatekeeping in in volleyball recruiting. I don't know. I don't want to speak for other sports, but you know, the blueprint to how you go through this process is there. But you know, he said, you know, we're the ones that were at, said at war with the kids, you know, through this process. And, and again, you know, it's, it's the, the time to get to know the, the family and they're again, holistically what they're looking for throughout the entire approach and, and be able to then have the side of us that spends, you know, half the day talking with, college coaches and those relationships and, and trying to help match those puzzles. And, you know, we don't make final decisions and kids know we don't make the final decisions, but certainly we can steer them in the right direction and help them identify. I think the biggest aspect, right, is helping kids identify schools that aren't on TV and that aren't the big name brands, but are incredible institutions and incredible, you know, coaching staffs who will very much prepare kids for success on and off the court beyond volleyball. So um, it's a giant puzzle and we love it. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So let's jump into uh, some actual talking uh, recruiting and and we cover uh, mostly Division One recruiting. So we'll kind of focus on that. But but again, I want before we get into this, if people listen or not, we'll, we talk about things that are trying to make change and improvements are going to be some things that may be a little bit controversial. I want to know we're not trying to throw anybody under the bus, whether that be recruiting coordinators, coaches, athletes, parents that have asked questions, but we need to talk about things and start discussions if we want to improve and educate. And the one thing that I've found in my two short years of doing this, I am by no means a pro, but I'm great at talking to kids and talking to parents. Um, and there's a lot of unknown. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of anxiety. And I think we really need to improve things for kids um, that will, A, cause them to have a better um, college experience, A, uh, prevent some of the transferring um, in the portal activity because they make a better decision right away. Um, and, and also just we don't want them leaving thinking, oh my God, I hate volleyball now because of their the college that they chose when they were 15, 16, whatever. And and it doesn't matter um, if you're the number one ranked player in the country to whatever, there is anxiety um, at all levels. And there's, there's some common themes, I guess, that I hear. Um, and so we'll just kind of break down some of those questions if you guys don't mind. So number one, I want to talk about what should, you know, we're previewing the 26s, the 26s, the 26s. What should a 25 be doing? A, what are they looking at? Um, are they, have they not gotten any offers yet? Or are they waiting on offers? Or so 25s that maybe haven't committed. Talk about that and, and Justin, briefly what they should be doing right now. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there are so many different athletes out there and very different parts of the process at this point in time. You know, there are athletes that have never even sent an email that are 25s in May and are like, wait, I need to be advocating for myself or wait, I need to be, you know, doing this or doing that. And, um, you know, I have no film. I have never taken film. I didn't know I needed to do that. You know, and then there's other athletes that have been sending emails since you know, freshman year of high school and have videos every single tournament and still are just out there wondering, what am I doing? And I think um, lots of times it's just guidance and someone to be able to say, all right, you know, A, let's kind of take a step back and look at 
what do you actually want? And kind of break down like, okay, what do you want out of this process? You know, um, self-evaluation is a very hard thing, but something we talk about a ton with our athletes and our parents is being able to self-evaluate and say, what level am I? What, um, you know, um, where should I be going? What do I want out of this um, for your experience? Do I want big school, small school, city, country, you know, like all that stuff. Um, and then kind of, all right, let's put this into, um, you know, formula and say, all right, these schools that meet my parameters, I need to start advocating for myself by emailing and having, especially 25s, it's getting you know, closer to the end of club season, I need to have potentially club coaches or recruiting coordinators also potentially, you know, advocating for, for me, um, you know, and, and yes, you do have to work for it. It is something that college coaches want to know that you worked for to earn. Um, so you should be, you know, being proactive, staying persistent and being prepared to, to, you know, continually send emails, even though you don't get responses, maybe uh, continually, you know, um, yeah. can I jump Sorry, can I jump in? That's one thing because I don't want to be given wrong advice either. But if you've emailed and emailed and emailed the school, that would tell me something, <clears throat> right? Uh, I mean, the recruiting is so much about timing. Uh, you know, it's got to be about timing. They need that position at that time, and they happen to, you know, like there's been so many instances where a school has said no to a kid or, or not said anything. And then all of a sudden a kid gets injured on their program, or they realize that an athlete in the spring is not exactly coming to what they thought they were. You get that email and you're like, Hey, today at practice, we were talking about how our setter's not really working out. This kid's really good. Should we reach out? And maybe you've sent 60 emails, but that, that timing just happened to be right. And you get the response, you get the call, you go on a visit and all of a sudden, boom, you go from sending emails for three years to committed in a week, you know? And so um, consistency is so important. Oh, I think the thing that, that, you know, I can touch on there with that is, is, I mean, one of the biggest factors of the recruiting process, if kids are truly in it because they, they have this passion and they, they want to play, they're not playing because of some outside factor influencing them or something is the willingness to be open-minded, the willingness to not just like dump everything and go back to the drawing board, but say, all right, with where I'm at, again, like Justin said, the self-evaluation process, like, mm -hmm. am I, what am I truly aiming for right here? And is this reasonable? And if it's unreasonable, am I just going to continue in this negative spot or the spiral of negativity or how am I, am I going to, which again, is this very scary thing for teenagers or adults too, that um, is to sit down and, and reflect internally and go, you know, okay, what is it then? And I, you know, I think the biggest, the biggest deterrent there is, is unfortunately social media, right? It's, uh, you know, our, yeah. my yeah. kids yeah. hear me say all the time, like, you know, comparisons, the thief of joy, and they, they just spend their days scrolling and with algorithms and, and things. I mean, it's just, they are, it's going to be a tidal wave of just recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. And I, I had to, I literally had to say to a kid one day, I was like, you just compared yourself to an athlete from Rhode Island who you don't know, you've never competed against yet. Your emotions are being impacted by seeing mm -hmm. her commitment and, you know, and then it just turned into a, an hour long conversation from of stories of athletes and, you know, not like outlandish outliers of stories. But I mean, yeah, we you know, we post a commitment graphic and we celebrate all of our kids. But behind, like, I always say if you could flip the graph, you know, if you could flip it around like a trading card and it had their story, you'd be blown away. Like, you know first, you know, top 50 schools didn't even want to get on the phone after June 15th, you know, it was final, final three or two for five different schools. And each one of them went a different way, um, had an offer and it had to be rescinded because now there's an injury and a change to the, the roster blue, blueprint and whatnot. Right. I mean, there's, there's so many things. And, and of course, I just, I just think ultimately the biggest thing we need to be educating athletes and families on right now is that this is their process and it's their future. And, it needs to be a holistic decision about them and it needs to not be about social pressure and wondering about if a kid's going to uh, someone at school is going to laugh because they don't know the name of the school or something, you know, they've, they've got to own it. Um, you know, again, not to 
use too many, you know, anecdotes or whatever, but it's like another, another girl we just had the other day. And, you know, she, she had a tough time because one of her friends was talking to her and, you know, didn't know the school she had just visited. And I said, well, did you, did you tell her that they've been to the NCAA tournament? Like, I think three times in the last five years, did you tell them they've won their conference? Did, you know, like, I mean, what, what did you then say positive about this? You know, and it's like, you have a chance to educate someone there, you know, just because they don't know something that's name brand. But again, you know, that if they're going to compare their process, it's going to be a struggle. And so, yeah, I mean, that's a, we spend probably more time on a lot of that sometimes than even the recruiting piece with, with the athletes we work with. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I guess I can see that I would be a little different. Um, I'd help to kind of maybe advise kids if, you know, when they're asking me, hey, um, I'm asking about camp. They haven't responded. I'm asking about camp. They haven't responded. I'm like, well, might be time to find a new camp um, is, you know, the easiest thing. And 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 I guess one thing I, I base my parameter off accepting the word no. Um, and so, so many of these things I hear from parents, right. I, and we'll get into hopefully a couple of them because I think they're myths on my end. Um, but the whole, well, we don't want to tell people what schools we kind of like, because we don't want to miss out on other opportunities. And I tell them, so please, I'm gonna let you call me out if I'm completely wrong and full of it. Um, which has happened before, by the way. Um, but I tell them that just because you put something that you went to school X's match, school Y, the only reason they're not going to recruit you is if they're truly not interested, right? If they're interested, they don't care. That's their job to make sure you don't go to school X and you come to school Y. So if you say, I had a great time at Tipton University Select Camp, then Justin Wells isn't going to say, I don't have, no, heck with that kid. We don't want it. Correct or incorrect? Yeah, for the most part, that's correct. I think there are some coaches out there. I always tell athletes, you got to remember college coaches are people too. Um, and there is some anxiety on the other side too. And, and I think um, that's something I talk about a ton is, you know, there are, there are some programs out there that, you know, you post, oh, had a great visit at, you know, Wisconsin the some of these lower d1s might just be like well all right let's take that kid off the list because they you know they're not going to fight they're not going to they've lost so many kids to that program or whatever you know and so they're just like it's not it's not worth my time or it's not you know I, I don't have the ability to run after this many kids and so yeah there are coaches out there that will do that but i don't think it's to your detriment i don't think like you posting about someone is going to hurt your recruiting, it may uh, influence some lower level coaches to not go after you. Um, but, you know, I don't think it's hurting your end result. Right. Well, and, and we talk about lower level, we're talking all level. It's wherever you're at, right? Everybody has decisions, choices um, that, that you have to make. So um, Peter, I want to ask you then, um, are, uh, you know, from like maybe a former coach's standpoint now, right? That they want to know the same thing, right? They want to know where they sit. And sometimes they're not getting honest answers um, where we say in sales, I'd rather be told, heck no, not interested day one than having to come meet with you 12 times and then being told no. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the part about the whole, like, no being a part of this is it reminds me, and maybe this is too grand of a comparison, but it reminds me of just like trying to make it in Hollywood as an actor. Like, you know, I, I think, you know, look at like a Steve Carell, you know, who doesn't get his first, you know, he didn't even get anything until what he's on the daily show, you know, and he's like 37 years old and it's, he's been chasing it his whole life. And so, you know, it's, it's a huge part of the education process to understand how to teach them how to be resilient when they get the nose. And then again, it's one thing to say rejection, but what we have to train them is the redirection part, right? Is to, okay, well then how does this redirect my process to where I need to go? And right. Otherwise it's, again, it's just like the no, the no, the rejection. I'm not good enough. Maybe I shouldn't play. Maybe this, maybe that, you know? And, and again, that's, that's not where we want them. That's not where we want them sitting and, and just going on, you know, on in their brains all day. Like we've got to get them, you know, get them focused on, on, the right direction from those mm -hmm. from those rejections but don't you think 
it's the it go it works both ways because as I talk with college coaches, they're like, hey, according <laughs> to right now, the number two player in the country, she's interested in us now. And then they always say, but that could just be a smoke cloud. It all changes on the 15th. Right. And I mean, Justin can certainly attest to this, uh, you know, and he has a much longer stint in college coaching, you know, than, than I had, but uh, you know, when, when coaches are looking for recruits, I don't, I, I don't think everybody grasps that they're not looking who's for somebody who has the ability to play at their school or simply the ability to compete in their conference. Like those coaches are looking for recruits who are wanting to bleed their colors, to yeah. represent them, to wear that Jersey, to be a, a bulldog or a hawk, whatever it is, you know? And I think, I think a lot of kids, again, maybe ch sometimes are chasing the conference or the name and that kind of a thing. And so, you know, we just, I just, Again, there's some hard conversations sometimes where we're telling a kid like, look, like we have relationships with these coaches, too. I mean, everything that we do is built on trust with the college coaching community. And so like we're not going to string them along. And, you know, first of all, if your gut's telling you that, you know, maybe this isn't the right thing. I mean, it's probably a larger sign, right, that we're probably kind of afraid to, again, just knock something off the table. Um, but no, it, you know, when they've got number two calling them and telling them, I want to be there and, you know, maybe there is a talent gap or this, but I think a lot of coaches are, are, are of the mentality that, you know what, like this kid wants it, she's going to earn it. Like, you know, okay. Like, you know, why, why are we going to wait around and potentially lose out on both of these candidates? So, um, yeah, a lot of times, and you alluded to this earlier, like the, the conversation of having to call a coach and tell them no, especially when, you know, because saying no to someone or to a program is not always just about like the volleyball or, or whatever, maybe it's, they didn't have their major. I mean, it could be any, a slew of things, right. But the, the relationship that you've developed is the hardest piece because, you know, whether the other factors are it or not, you know, you've still developed a bond with these coaches and it's hard, it's hard to tell them no, but you're doing them a favor by allowing them to respectfully move forward too. Um, yeah. you know, and, and, and again, hanging on, like, again, even sometimes coaches that don't put a, you know, a, a cutthroat sort of deadline or ending on it, you know, sometimes kids will just wait too long. And then we see the dual offers or all of a sudden, you know, kids do get the, the contacts out of the blue and it's like, Hey, we need to talk like things have changed and this is no longer on the table. It's been too long. And so, you know, kids really do need to understand that, that they can't always operate off of their timeline and wanting to go out and visit all these schools and be able to do the whole nine yards with each one of them. Um, and, and again, like that's tough and, and we want them to acknowledge that it's tough. And yeah, it, it's exactly I want to just interject, sorry, because that is number one thing. Sorry, guys. It's uh, we're on the road. Dog, dogs uh, uh <laughs> in, a, in a, the podcast. Sorry, but uh, it, I want to interject because that's one thing I hear the most is the whole timeline, right? And you're talking. You just said you might not be able to go through the whole process, right? Well, I think that's part of the problem. Uh, myself is. I, I can't imagine being a former college football coach, not doing the on-campus visit, not being around the student body, not talking, not watching a practice, not being there for a game day, right? Like that's when you truly learn. And it's when you get spoiled. You're never going to be treated better than your um, than your recruiting trip, probably. Um, and, and so let's break this down in a couple spots. And we got to be kind of brief with each, but one – what do you say to athletes to prepare them for schools that may give them a deadline? And Justin, I'm going to let you take this one. Yeah. So this is something we talk about before every visit, because you never know. I mean, even if their coach has not been traditionally, um, you know, prone to making deadlines, you never know. I mean, maybe they have some other athlete pushing them, so they have to push you. Uh, so I think the biggest thing we typically try to say is pre preparation is the most important. That's why we meet with them before the visit and say, all right, what are the things you need to know? This is your opportunity. You need to let them know. I want to see, you know, this part of campus. I want to talk to this person. I want to meet with an you know, advisor. I want to like, this is your opportunity to get all the final things. So when every college coach thinks at the end of that visit, you should be technically ready to say yes or no. You Wait, should but we're yeah, I'm sorry. We're talking six weeks down the road, though, for a lot, a lot of the kids that, you know, that we talk with, they have to go six weeks. I'm talking about 
June 15th, June 16th, right? The 12 kids that committed before the end of 48 hours last year, right? What, what about them? And I, I, I may be completely wrong. I just, I don't buy it when they say, well, I just grew up and I just knew, you know, but so what do you say to kids that you may get a deadline? Are you prepared for it or how do you prepare? And I guess to follow up, you touched on something. Are there coaches that are known for giving deadlines or is it a year to year thing or they're just certain staffs where this is what they do? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there are definitely coaches out there that you're pretty sure they're, they're going to give a deadline. Um, there are coaches out there that just believe in that. I believe in, I'm not going to give you unlimited time. I'm going to give you a month or a week or a, you know, like I've done everything, you know, I've done everything I need to do. So, I mean, you either know or you don't. So either tell me yes or tell me no. And then there's other staffs out there that'll give you all the time in the world, you know? And so, yeah, there, there are varying degrees of that, but I, but yeah, when it does come to this, and this is something that um, is hard for me personally, because the last, you know, however many years it's been since this June 15th thing has happened, it's, it's difficult to watch these athletes commit prior to being able to actually take a visit or being able to really get to know the staff and the campus and the, the team. And yeah, you might know the campus because you've been there for camp or you've been there, your parents went there. And so you know it really well, but do you really know the culture? Do you really know that's the kind of stuff you get during, um, you know, visits and during in-depth conversations with the athletes. So we very much just are, are, are honest with our athletes and say, hey, this is kind of how we feel. Um, but, you know, everyone has to make their own decision. We're going to guide you, give you the best feedback on both aspects. And then at the end of the day, it's up to you and your parents to make the right decision for you. And I think you, Justin, I think you actually like in your first part of the answer, like, actually like alluded to the thing, which is the preparedness, right? And so like, we are typically not going to be caught off guard by the athlete who does receive a timeline like that, like the imminent, like 24, 48 hours. Like, you know, like when we have certain schools involved or coaches, like we're, these things are all on our end with the families. Like we've conversed about all of this and, and everything. And, you know, it's, you know, it's well, just like, Peter, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but, but I want to talk about the average student who might not have you, right? Like sure. I yeah. talk with a lot and I get that's uh, advocating for what right. you guys do, but if yeah. I play at club X and I have one recruit, uh, one coordinator for, let's say two teams of seniors, let's say 36 kids, right? Uh, there's 12, the, the year that 25s that haven't commit, maybe 15, 26s, right? Are they getting that? Or what should they be doing? And I don't want, we're not trying to throw anybody under the bus. This is yeah. me being a naive football coach. What are they getting this education? And are they ready? Because I ask parents all the time, what are you going to do if you get a timeline? And they're like, like nobody has an answer for it. Right. And, and when, it, and again, when it comes down to that final decision, like that's, that's not our decision or your club director's decision or right. your a recruiting coordinator or coach or whatever, like it is your decision and it's a family decision. And so again, hopefully knowing, I mean, hopefully they're getting that education and the research, but for somebody who doesn't, and is kind of a little bit blind to all of this and, and then is caught off guard by, holy cow, like this is, this is it. And like, maybe we, all we have to go off of is this, this one camp visit, um, you know, again, that's, I mean, that's why I think that's why sometimes we see some of the gamesmanship, right? Because coaches know if they don't put that deadline on, there's a great possibility that that kid's going to get discovered at the next tournament after June 15th or whatever it is, um, you know? And, and, and so if they're not getting that, that knowledge, you know, again, hopefully they are seeking that out. Now it, this is, this would have been a whole different story back in what was it the 21 class was the first the 22 i'm blanking on that but you know like the first time we went through this and we were like what is this going to be like and offers were like flying out by emails at midnight and things like that some at some places and um you know but now that we've been through this for a few years and a i do think we have seen an overall reduction of coaches throwing those immediate offers out because a lot of coaches are wanting to focus on getting the right kid especially with the portal and now you know the double transfer kids and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so hopefully they are seeking the education that is out there and, you know, and, and follow us on social media. We'll talk about it. Ask us questions, reach out to somebody who can help you um, instead of just trying to do it all alone. And of course they have all the power in the world to take, to do it by themselves and to make that decision. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, ask yourself this one question. If this coach is gone, if my playing time isn't there, 
is this still the school for me? Do we have enough information for us to say, like, this is where I want to be. This is where I see myself, whether I'm not playing, whether I'm hurt, whether the coaches, whether I decide I don't want to play volleyball anymore. They, and if it's got to be a resounding yes, you know? Okay. Yeah. And I want to get, but real quick, man, this should be a six hour podcast because we're not even going to get, we haven't even got a third of the way down my list. But Justin, I want to give you the chance to respond maybe for a coach's perspective. Okay. But devil's advocate, why a coach right now who's listening to this is like, well, here's why I'm giving them a deadline. Uh-huh. Go through that so maybe parents and kids understand. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's their livelihood. You know, like I have to lot of certain programs, I have to win to keep you know food on the table for my family. Right. Um, and and at certain programs, winning is very very difficult because. Um, you have your conference or your funding or all this other stuff. So what else are you going to do, um, you know, to, to set yourself apart? And maybe it is, okay, I know I need one of these five. And if I don't timeline quickly, I might lose all five. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the strategy of, you know, 24 hour, um, or a week, um, you know, and there's, I mean, trust me, I mean, over the 12 years of my career, we went through many different, okay, do we offer one, then give her a week and then offer number two and then give her a week and then offer number, or do we, you know, offer and let them sit on it. So like there, there's not one right way. So coaches are probably sitting there going in order to get this kid or no, I need to move to number two. I have to timeline. Okay. Really makes sense. Um, so I want to get one thing, um, boy, we are going to have to have like part two and part three of this. Um, but one thing I want to do before we kind of go, I want what I always ask um, and the prospects that I feel like taken the most time, they kind of bring up asking hard questions. Okay. Um, and what I mean, let me give you an example. Um, how will I be treated um, if I'm the last, if I end up being the last girl on the bench? I don't pan out for you, right? How will I be treated if I'm the last girl on the bench or if I'm your three-time All-American? Questions like that, right? Will I play right away? But whatever it might be, right? Do you have do you have um, tools in, in for mental health, right? Um, what are you, you know, if I'm struggling, what's going to happen? Things like that. But I'm a, I'm a 51 year old man and there's some um, coaches, <laughs> a few of them are ranked pretty high and I would be scared to sit down with them and ask them tough questions. What is your advice for a 16 year old and or her family to sit on a zoom, right? Or whatever, and ask tough questions and right. That they really want to know, knowing they might not get the right answer. Who wants to take this one? I mean, I can just start it real quick by, I mean, you know, just by saying, obviously, like, it's a loaded, something like that's a loaded question, um, you know, and I think when, when you think about those, like, all the questions you stated, you know, like, how will I be treated? How will I? How will I? You know, I think what the actual thing that the athlete maybe needs to do, I mean, I probably need to think on this a whole lot more, so we'll see what what sense in that. You got time, you got one hour, and I need your decision. But, uh, you know, I think. I think the athlete really needs to think about like, again, like college athletics is, is kind of dog eat dog. Right. Yeah. And so, and especially at yeah. the D1 level, right? Like one, what about r- around 1% of high school volleyball players will play D1 or whatnot. And so maybe instead of thinking about the question of how will I be treated? It's like, how am I going to respond if I haven't earned the playing time and I'm the, you know, I'm not performing and I'm maybe the lowest man on the to- totem pole. Like, you know, how, and, and how am I going to be treated if I'm a three-time All-American? Well, I mean, I mean, your play might be All-American, but what are the, uh, hopefully the other aspects of there are there too of your leadership and what you're bringing to the program and what you see in the role and the responsibility of, of someone of that, you know, those, those standards. Like, yeah, I mean, it's very, comp- it's something to definitely think about and continue revisiting, but I mean, I think we need to set, short, sort of think about the framing of the question first off, um, okay. you know, because if we're going to expect, if we're going to expect college coaches to give an accurate answer to a kid when they're a sophomore, when there's still two years of development, and all of this and all that and decisions that they're going to make on and off the court to put themselves in the best position to succeed. Like, I think we're, we're crazy to assume that any of that is going to re- remain so constant, you know, in a way, I guess, you know, and, and so it's such an evolving process to to get to that point. 
Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, Justin, maybe you want to dive in and continue that yeah. and then I'll kind of keep thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think the number one thing, like we've said it over and over again, is preparation. Um, you know, have you mock had those conversations yeah. with uh, a recruiting coordinator, a club director, a parent, a friend, and been able to ask those questions and prepare for it? Yeah, it's, go it's still going to be hard. Yeah, it's still not easy to put someone to that question. Um, but preparing yourself allows you to be ready and to, to frame it the right way and to ask it the right way. Um, I would say 80% of what we do is just, hey, I wouldn't ask it that way. I would ask it this way. Or this is how you say that to get this answer, you know, like, um, you know, just to kind of uh, guide them the most politically correct, but also still get what you need out. And then, I mean, you cannot overuse the athletes, the current athletes, especially in a social media culture. I mean, have you reached out to the athletes? Have you DM them? Have you, you know, gotten to know them a little bit? Um, have you asked them the hard questions? Because athletes are going to be very honest. Um, athletes are going to be, um, you know, upfront for the most part on an official visit, maybe less so because they're being watched. But at other times, you know, yeah, they're going to be honest. So um, have you done your due diligence to A, prepare to have, ask those questions and then B, um, you know, not just ask that single individual, but maybe a couple of different individuals? Um, and if you get the same answer from all four, then it's probably true. If you get different answers from all four, then maybe we need to go back to the drawing board and decide, is this right? I think again, and, and okay, so yeah, that that kind of spurred something. Um, so yeah, when you're talking about the framing of the question, right? And then, you know, you know, originally the way you, you said them, Darren, it was like, you know, it was all I, 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 right? And, and I think coaches are going to hear that and the me, me, me thing. But um, you know, again, like it, this is all about the coaching of how, you know, like how we coach kids and educate them to ask difficult, the difficult questions, like you said. And, you know, if you're looking at a, a team's roster and whether it was because of injuries or what, or what's going on. And of course you have all the, the fun message boards out there that, you know, make people think things that are half truths and no, not, not truths mm -hmm. and this and that, uh, you know, it start like perking people's ears and whatever. And it's like, you know, we don't need that. Like what you need to ask coaches, you know, maybe look at their roster, their schedule and it's like, okay, like, you know, coach, I, you know, like, let's talk about your, your schedule breakdown last season. Like there's this big gap here. Like, you know, how did, A, how'd you get the team back on the tracks and, and B like, you know, when you think to that, that, that period where you, you know, had this seven match losing streak all of a sudden and not find, find yourself on the cusp of not making the tournament or, you know, or from the, just the wheels coming completely off the tracks. How are you making sure that every kid on the roster top to bottom, you know, like, how did you personally motivate, you know, you know, kid number 18 on your roster or 15 or whatever it is, what did that look like to make sure that you, you know, that that kid is feeling valued? You know, and I think that's again, it's it's all in the coaching of 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 how to ask those questions. And again, it's it's really hard to not be egocentric about it when it's about your process and me. But again, I think in by saying, you know, how will I be treated or that, like we're asking to predict the future, you know, and um and and in, in a way that we have to wait until it's played out. And uh, so much of the power is going to be on the athlete to determine how persistent and resilient they're going to be and are they going to put in the extra work and you know how do they respond to that right um but yeah um and i want to talk to you about that what informing athletes and parents that this is the time and it, it makes it sound so bad right like when you get there you're in school you're almost like an employee but but you are it's a job i mean it's it's a full-time job it's not it, it's different. It's about winning and losing. And um, yes, you're pre preparing yourself for your career, but it's different, right? It's it's not the recruitment process is called that for a reason, right? Camps are camps. You act different at camp than you do in the middle of a five match losing streak at a 6 a.m. practice. Fair okay. Sure. But I think my thing is, I think athletes truly need to get to know what happens then and can I handle that? before before they sign on but we <laughs> talk difference. well so, do you think would a coach do well, coaches was, say that i mean well, are they I was, just, I was just thinking back to you know that you're quite you know in talking about the kids that might get the, that offer on june 15th or 16th or whatever and right and all they have to go off is you know well i was at camp or whatever and <laughs> no what you need to do is you need to be on an official visit and you need to be in the locker room between sets two and three when they're down oh two to a, a team with yeah. an rpi of whatever and it's gonna 
blah, blah, blah. And that coach is like, ah, like, you know, like they need to be in the thick of it to understand. And okay, now you can truly see like, how does this program re, you know, react to things and, and how does the coach handle this? And, and what is that relationship like? What are the, what are the girls or the guys, you know, look like that are respond, you know, how are they responding to this coach? Do they buy into it or are they cowering back? And, and, you know, kind of a thing, you know, like, again, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, you, and again, you're just, some of them just aren't going to get that opportunity um, and, and have the decision to make, right. Like you said, of, I mean, it's either we, we take it or we don't. And sometimes that can be the scariest thing, but like, if you're one of those kids, you're very likely going to still have amazing, amazing offers. And yeah. and heck, we're still seeing kids transfer out of schools that are the top 10 programs, right? It doesn't just because you're going to that school does not does not mean that you are going to play. Um, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. again, with the transfer portal, like you got to be you, I mean, you have to be so mentally equipped for and emotionally equipped right. to respond to that and know how to seek resources to respond kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. And I absolutely see what you guys are talking about. I, I, I see the education. What, what I'm wondering is because, because I don't know. And I, um, the recruiting coordinator said, I've gotten to know really respect him. I'm like, how in the heck do you, A, you know, every college coach's name um, would be a big thing. Right. But, but helping all these different kids in all these different situations, but are they getting that training right? Are they getting that mental preparation? Like, are you ready for this? Or is it just sign? And I am not trying to offend anybody. Um, but are, are they, or does it, is it just case by case, club by club? Um, you know, um, but because that seems really important to me, like the easy part is signing, um, or verbally. The, the hard part is getting ready to make sure you're ready when you step on campus and then handling what college athletics is really all about. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I don't know if if every athlete is is getting that. And um, actually, that's a lie. I do know for a fact not every athlete is getting that. Um, you know, over the last 12 years, there have been many athletes I've talked to on June 15th and after and just been shocked that they weren't ready for that or they didn't know that or they said that or they asked that or they did that. And it's like, man, how did they, you know, how were they not prepared? How did they not, like, you know, this is a big thing. This is, this kid's from a good club, you know? And so, uh, I mean, that's where we talk to many club or college coaches that'll literally say, I stick to these clubs or I, because I have connections and I know that they're getting the education and stuff like that, you know? Right. Yeah. That's a whole other um, topic that I, I wonder about as well. And, and you guys are right. That's why BB Adrenaline, I guess, exists is that education piece. And uh, I do want to leave with this. This will be the last one is uh, um, I only can pay some for so many minutes on my podcast on my Buzzsprout account, but um, getting through to athletes and their parents that this is the time where they truly have the power and the control, right? And when you show up, it's not as much, right? Like when you get there, you are part of a program. Um, how do you stress that to your athletes that, hey, this is your time to ask for more time or to ask these questions because you are the valued commodity here, right? They want you, right? So do you guys do education with that? Because I don't, as I talk to a lot of kids and parents, I don't feel like they, they're they all like, oh, we're scared we're going to make so-and-so upset or we're scared that we'll turn off. And I'm like, no, you're in control of this process. Is that accurate? Justin? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, it, you know, it is, it is accurate to a certain degree, but I think, again, the biggest thing is just going to be, um, you know, preparation and them understanding like that, you know, you may have to say no to this school because they're giving you unrealistic timelines or whatever. And if you, if, do you have a backup? And, and so it's just about kind of educating and getting them to understand like, um, yes, you do have the power, but they also have the power to just move on. And you've got to be okay with that. Um, and if you're not okay with that, then what are we going to do to prepare for it? Um, and I think it's just thinking through those different potential scenarios and being able to have uh, a realistic conversation about them and saying, if this says this, are you okay losing that option for the potentiality of option B? If not, then we've got to take it, you know, and you've got to make that best decision for you and your family.
Well, I think a lot of the, the focus here has been, you know, in regards to kind of like the June 15th and, and kind of the D1 thing, but it's no different than like, just like how many of our athletes, what per, I don't know what percentage to, to put on it, but it's, it's, it'd be way higher than I think anyone listening would think, you know, is it the same conversation when, you know, when we're just trying to, you know, 90% of the battle sometimes is like, just take the phone call with that coach because you don't know the school's name or, you know, you think you drove through this state and it smelled that one time, you know, when you drove through it. So, oh, why would I look there and blah, blah, blah. And, it's, you know, and it's like, I mean, I would venture to say, and, you know, we just had our, you know, in, in the past four and a half years now, like Justin and I doing this on our own and, and whatnot, like 287 athletes who have completely gone through this process. And I think only 104 of them are division one. Um, and yeah. so many of those kids are kids who thought that division one was the only opportunity for them. And, you know, maybe found out they wanted more life balance or this and that. And they didn't know that until they got on you know, the phone with these coaches. And I would honestly say 80% total of our athletes end up at schools that are not originally on a target list or are in really? a yeah. state or a different size or location or whatever factor that is outside their comfort zone initially. And, you know, and that's what I think we, Justin and I like truly love and are passionate about is like getting that call from the kid. That's like, I don't want to leave this visit. Like, this is this is it and and we're not saying that every single athlete is always going to get that like butterfly feeling or whatnot like i mean i think everybody processes feelings and things differently but like you know that's that's what kids should be feeling like and and that's what's so lost in this process is like and that we try to instill in kids is like yeah. it's hard it's complex there's anxiety yeah. of course let's acknowledge that but let's also remember that the joy in this and that when we get to the end of it you're going yeah. to look back and see the growth you've had as a person and and what that's led to your growth on the court and then how excited you like you should feel so excited about your future whether it's the next two years or it's a four-year school or whatever like you should be just so ecstatic and if and if you're not and you, you know like buyer's remorse and recruiting is not fun to, to deal with that is hard and then you've got to explain you know then every coach well why did you commit why this like you know and and that's not a fun place to be either and, and of course it's like well of course like the families we work with will guide you through that but you know like we really want to try and do our best to get this right we'll never be 100 percent right there will always be the transfer portal and whatnot but you know we can sure as heck make sure that we've had every every conversation possible to hopefully allow them to make the best decision for themselves because again they are making the decision in the end yeah, and I really think hammering it home again that it's your process, right? Not everybody, you know, I mean, wants what comes with playing at a, you know, certain logo school. And and some people want to be doctors and internship opportunities, study abroad opportunities, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And 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 really no one really thinking about that and and you're driven, but We'll end on this um, um, because this is good. It, it's tough conversations and that always the most fun, but it is good to educate. Um, but what would, do you have one piece of advice for maybe a family, a mom and dad that are sitting there like, uh, what do we do now? What is the best thing they can do between now and whenever, whether it's June 15th, whether they're in the process, what can a parent do to maybe help? ease the anxiety of their student or maybe open up communication with their af student athlete so they're ready for this process. Justin? Yeah, I mean, e education. Educate yourself. Educate through talking to people that are in the know, um, talking to people that have gone through this, talking to, to athletes, to parents, to uh, recruiting coordinators, to uh, educating yourself is going to be the easiest way to feel prepared and ready for whatever is coming your way. Um, and when you're educated, then you guys can have very open and honest conversations as a family and say, all right, we do we need to be prepared for A, B, and C? Um, and, and just, you know, I, I mean, education is the greatest way to feel confident in this process. Um, and, and that's important. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a realm where you can't take your, you know, I don't want to say you can't take your foot off the gas pedal because we literally tell kids we're like go take a break like you do not mm -hmm. need to handle like recruit like you need to go be a kid like no like you have prom tonight like why are we talking about this unless you have a decision to make by tonight or tomorrow okay maybe that's a different story but like you, you need to be a kid like um you're and because again that's where they're going to lose the joy and and you know they just you know 
again, you just ha- this is just a, a world of persistence. It's a world where you can't fade out. You know, like you, you email somebody once and don't get a response, so you don't follow up. Well, then, yeah, you know, but who knows the hundred different reasons I could give you for why there wasn't a response at that time. Um, you know, the evaluation part of this process is constantly evolving. So, you know, and, and again, just, you know, co- I think, Justin, you, you, you probably know this again better than I would, but like great programs in college are built off of organic relationships. And so I think it's just, again, it's the honesty, it's that transparency and it's asking for transparency. And, and again, you know, when our brains are wired to tell us to run when something's hard or makes us anxious and, and it's, you know, and then we just need to tell, like, we need to educate families and parents, whatever it is, kids, that it's, it's, like, we need to acknowledge that it's, ang- that it, it drives the anxiety. We need, we need to acknowledge that this is hard and that there are going to be tough feelings involved, but then coach them on how to navigate through that. And, and again, when you get to the end, there's, there's no better part, you know, than, than that and everything you've gone through. So it's just, yeah, don't, don't fade out and, and stay persistent. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and one thing I want to add as I get to talk to parents, athletes, and coaches, I guess, um, the triangle, athletes, don't get upset with moms and dads if they're trying to get you to talk about what you're thinking, what you're feeling, um, and don't put your head in the sand. Um, that's no way to approach this situation is just say, I got six weeks yet. I don't have to think about what my finalists are or what schools I like you be part of this process with your parents, with your recruiting coordinators, uh, with whoever you're working with, be part of this process because it is your process. Um, and, you know, don't yell at mom and dad when they try and get you to sit down and plan your uh, future a little bit. So, uh, so a little plug there for uh, parents that are trying to talk to 16 year olds right now, uh, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. But guys, I want to uh, thank you. Um, I want to thank you for t- uh, tackling some of my tough questions um, that aren't really mine. They're from other people, but stuff that we don't really talk about. And you guys are awesome. I can see the value in what you're doing, the extra, no matter where people fall on it, um, on, on the issue, right? I can see the training. So I'm from South Dakota, right? And not everybody gets that individualized, great recruiting concept. So there are, um, there are cases and, um, I'm telling you guys really care about your, your clients. So thank you. Um, uh, we may do this five or six more times, but I appreciate you guys. Uh, tell, tell us about, uh, uh, Peter, tell me about your brand new website. What's the address for everybody? Yeah, it's just uh, just fsvolley.com, F-S-V-O-L-L-E-Y. Um, and yeah, you can go on there, learn about, we have individual recruiting partnerships, which is just, you know, we can work, we'll work with any athlete. It doesn't matter what their goals are. You know, it's not a D1 or bust thing. Um, we, we, we know everything about all the levels, work with all the coaches. Uh, so yeah, so you can head there, learn about that. We do our club recruiting partnerships where we serve as the full-time recruiting coordinators and, and what we've just kind of gotten into. And this is a great time for it is, you know, not, not every club has the ability to hire us for that, but what we, what we love, we love doing is, is going to clubs or speaking to clubs, even over, you know, a zoom or whatnot and, and being able to educate them and, and do educational sessions. So, um, you know, we, we truly want to, to help expand the education within, within the recruiting world. And, and again, help kids on the personal side and the mental health side of this as well. And, um, yeah. and can just, yeah, follow us and get a lot of additional education just at flow state volley, um, on pretty much every social media handle. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and thanks again, guys. And, uh, and, and athletes, uh, parents, recruiting coordinators, college coaches, whatever, let's keep the discussion going. Um, that's the way we improve all this, but the bottom line is to make it better for kids. Um, and if kids can feel better and less anxious about the process, um, no matter what their process is, um, that's I think that's good for everybody. So guys, thanks again. Um, everybody, it's great to be back um, on the podcast. Thanks for following us. Again, if you want to follow us on our social media, um, our new Instagram handle at Volleyball Adrenaline. Thank you. We are slowly but surely building back to what our fellowship was before we got hacked um, on the X at VB Adrenaline and on our Facebook page. And again, VBAdrenaline.com for everything recruiting, um, for prospect updates, and we're going to have so much more coming your way. And we thank you guys for your time. Thank and you for having us. Anytime. Yeah, guys, take care now. Thanks, everybody.